Right, should we start with what it means for you to be awarded a testimonial? Yeah, okay. Um, obviously it's a privilege and an honour uh, in order to be able to get it. Uh, it was something me and Cugs spoke about the first time I spoke to Cugs. Um, eight, nine years ago, however long it was, and he, part of his tale to me was that seven years, eight years, testimonial. Um, since then I've seen a few players and played in a few testimonials for uh, Frankie Chappell and JV. So it's been quite quite nice to, to get to that point. Um, and it's been in, in the pipeline for a while. Uh, last summer we spoke about it and then at Christmas we spoke again. Um, so for him to yeah, officially be rewarded with my time here with the testimonials, uh, yeah, brilliant. Obviously it's case for one of former clubs in Maystone as well. Yeah, and that was part of it when we spoke down. It was, well, actually, what game do we choose and how do we work it? And so I gave uh, Bill Williams at Maidstone, dropped him an email and just said, uh, it'd be great to have them. Uh, obviously, it's Maidstone has been part of my history and my career as well. So uh, it'll be good to see some, some familiar faces uh, back from the club that I was at before. Right, so you've been here quite a, quite a while now. Obviously, you're getting your testimonial. Um, what memories have you got of playing against the Victor? Uh, I reckon I played maybe three, four times uh, against them before I came. Um, I remember at first at Lewis, uh, we played in a cup game down at Lewis when I was down there. Um, I think we ended up 3-1, but it was a tough game. And then for Leatherhead, played a couple. For Maidstone, I remember watching a couple, watched the league game. Um, and then the playoff, final, playoff semi-final as well. When I was at Maidstone, we beat folks on 1-0. Uh, Boovies came on and scored. Um, so always tough games, always close games. I remember, especially coming down here, uh, difficult place to come, especially when at that point we had a back four that played the highest, uh, the highest defensive line that you could ever imagine. Um, and it used to catch you out all the time. Uh, it's tough to play against. And uh, well, you mentioned Booker there. He was um, he was your partner before you come here, and then reunited with him when you did. Yeah, um, yeah. When I first moved down to Kent uh, and signed for Lewis, he was my my car school buddy. Um, so me and him used to travel down to Lewis. Then at the end of that season, um, it was actually Booby that probably put the word in to Jay Saunders at Maidstone and said, are you interested? Um, so then I went to Maidstone and played with him there. Uh, and then obviously my first season when I come down to Folkestone, uh, he was my strike partner here as well. So when, when you signed for him, Victor, tell us a bit about how that came about. Yeah, it nearly happened a year earlier. Um, so when I left Maidstone, had a number of clubs that were interested um, and at the top of my list I went and met two and nailed it down to two and that was Leatherhead and Folkestone. Um, I had some good conversations with with Cugs. Um, I went and met, met Simon Austin as well in Maidstone to talk about it uh, and just in the end decided with Leatherhead. Uh, I knew a few players that were down there already that were previously at Maidstone um, so I knew what things were about, I knew what to expect at Leatherhead. Um, so I ended up signing for Leatherhead but kept in touch with Cugs. And then when the opportunity arrived the following year, um, yeah, I was delighted to, to come down and sign. I guess that played, played a part in it. When you did come the next year, you'd already spoken to Cugs, you knew, you knew he had that interest and, and yeah. that sort of... I yeah, guess, made definitely. It to do. Um, it's a nice club um, and I knew that from the outset. Um, Darren Smith that was with me at Leatherhead as well, he was coming down to sign. So that was another player that I knew uh, and knew well, and I knew that I played well with him. Um, at Leatherhead, we changed to playing almost a three up um, or one up front, which didn't suit me as much. We'd just got promoted to my the Premier. Um, so to come down and play in a, in a front two with Boovey again, um, tick the boxes really. Well, so when you, when you first came here and Victor missed out on promotion a couple of times, um, after your signing, it was like it was a two-year step to, to going up. Yep. You scored 40, 43 and 40 goals in those two seasons. Obviously missed out in the playoffs the first year, and then went on to win a title in the second. Yeah, um, and really that playoff was a real disappointment. Really, that was the only thing of that season or those first two seasons that playoff loss in that first year that really um, that anything went wrong. Um, I had almost the perfect season the first year, scoring the goals I did. Going back to playing up front um, alongside a strike partner was what suits me um, and I felt comfortable and that's probably why I scored the amount of goals that I did. Um, was obviously you, you scored three goals less the next year but you did play less games that se season but you obviously went on to win the title in a, in a, in a side that almost dominated that division. Yeah, 
Um, and those two years, I look back and they were good years. Um, and obviously, you're involved in football uh, to win games, and we were winning regularly. Um, and I was getting chances. So as a striker, if you're playing in a winning team and you're, you're getting chances um, and opportunities to score goals, then yeah, I was really happy at those two. The next year then was then Ryman Prem. Um, it was a very different year to the year before. Um, a lot of struggle and obviously stayed up on the final day. Yeah, the yeah, it was a struggle. Uh, that's exactly what it was. Um, I think we had the team that was probably a mid-table Ryman Premier team, but the adjustment from probably winning games consistently over two years to then moving into a, a more powerful, quicker, more physical league. Um, the adjustment period took a bit longer than we expected. Um, we were better than a relegation team um, in that, but it was nice to, after a really bad season, to almost get, get it over the line and make sure that we're, we're still in this league and, and able to take a step forward the following year. Well, you, you scored two of three goals on the final day. Um, we managed to dig out the video, <laughs> videos of them two. They're quite a relic. Um, what did that mean to score them two? Yeah, it was brilliant. Obviously, one was a penalty. Um, I think Joe Taylor was around at that point as well, so I know he was pushing me and saying that he wanted it. Um, but I stepped up and, uh, yeah, I was more than happy to, to put it away. And like I say, it almost capped off a bad season. And it was a season, I think, the club and the players we put behind us quite quickly and wanted to make sure that that didn't happen again. In the end, you shot quite far at the table, and if you look back at the table, it doesn't look like Invicta were actually in trouble with that with that win taking you up to about mid-table. <laughs> yeah, and I know even going into the last couple of games, we knew that actually there was quite a lot of teams in and around the bottom um, bottom six. I think it ended up being um, so making sure that we got that final win uh, was obviously important for the club. Um, so on to the next year, 17-18. Um, I don't think it's a year that you could have predicted, given the year before. Um, 104 goals. Um, and play off heartbreak at the end of it. Yeah, um, yeah. again, highs and lows throughout the season. Um, like I said, we needed to be in the Ryman Premier, that's where the club needed to be and we were thankful and I think the boys showed it the following year. I think the adjustment period was over um, and we could really kick on. We made a couple of good signings um, during that summer. Um, I don't know, Cugs at the beginning of the season looked at it and said, no, we need to be causing more teams trouble. Um, so yeah, I know, we were playing a front three for the majority of it with me, Joe Taylor and Addy. Um, so yeah, no surprise that we scored 104 goals. Well, obviously, yeah, as I say, it ended in, in playoff heartbreak almost. Um, late, late goal, Billy Ricky sort of, sort of started it off when you know dropped in, into fourth in the way playoff, and then Hendon obviously I don't think will go down as as, as the not greatest moment in the club. No, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean before Billy Ricky, even during the game, we knew if you look at the celebrations of, uh, I think Taylor scores. Um, you can see that we thought that was it. We had done enough to almost get a home, home draw in the playoff. Which, the form that we were in, we were we were more than happy to bring anyone back down there. Um, for them to then score, obviously their screamer late on, um, it put a dent on our awards evening that we had that evening. Uh, and then obviously to roll on to, to the Tuesday night away at Hendon, um, probably capped off our worst moment of um, my Folkestone career, if you like. It wasn't a Folkestone performance, and yeah, we probably let ourselves down that night. Um, obviously, following year, the club only just missed out on the playoffs, and it almost felt a bit different. Instead of instead of missing out, having been so good, it, the club the club was coming from a, a mid-table position to almost almost just missed out, and it maybe felt a different kind of disappointment. Yeah, um, yeah. First year, Ryan McBride was probably an underperformance. Second year, we probably overachieved a little bit, although it ended in disappointment. Um, Third year, I think we were starting to establish ourselves as a real Ryman Premier team that were, were looking to move up the table. Um, and suddenly we had eyes for nothing less than the playoffs. Um, again, disappointing at the end of the season, but I think we had a couple of good cup runs in that league. I think we played Woking away in the FA Trophy and had a couple of real good performances on there. So we could, it felt like the club was now moving in the right direction um, and we were establishing ourselves as a really good team. Obviously the following year you started yourself off with an injury that um, left you out the side and obviously you then, you then went to Chatham on loan and, and then Covid hit once and then twice. Um, did it ever, how, how much did it cross your mind that maybe you wouldn't end up breaking the goal scoring record at that point? No, it didn't to be honest. Um, I was happy with the amount of goals that we had. Um, I've had a, every year I get offers to go elsewhere and a couple of times I nearly did move on. Um, 
So the record was never something that was at the forefront of my mind. It was more playing games um, and playing regularly in the team and at a club that I enjoy. Um, and the players here have always been brilliant. It's a club that I feel comfortable at. Um, the record was never at the forefront of my mind. Um, obviously, I've changed position as well as the as it's gone on. Um, we've changed the way we play um, from being a, almost a two up top and having a good partnership up there. We've gone for a more dynamic, powerful um, front three. So, yeah, we've got to a point now where we were in um, and we were really looking to move on. As you, as you mentioned there, you've uh, you've changed your role over the years. Um, how would you how would you say your role has changed and would you say that was more of a gradual thing or it was you know maybe one season something had changed within the club that, that meant um, your role changed almost overnight no a bit of both um even before i came here i played centre midfield um quite a lot for a couple of different clubs um even at lewis i had a bit of time right midfield in a in a four um maidstone i played right midfield in a four a little bit um so i think my attributes you'd probably say that i could play uh, in a number of positions um, so as it moved on and we moved to playing one up front am I that vocal target point that probably Cogs would want it especially in the Ryman Premier no I'm not um, I understand that we like to get the ball forward quickly um, and we like a, a big strong powerful striker that's going to upset defenders so that's not me um, so I almost had to adjust and um, so I moved into yeah central midfield and even that year um, but I ended up going Chatham, I played midfield all of pre-season uh, I felt really good until I broke my wrist uh, and then obviously when I came back a couple of months later uh, we were performing really well um, and it was best that I went and got some game time elsewhere Well, um, you've obviously talked about breaking the record before um, Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about, about the day, day you did it then I guess um, Obviously, did you, did you expect to take the penalty? Yeah, I've always put my name um, at the top of that list to, to take penalties. If you look at my record for folks, festive list. <laughs> it's good. Um, my record's always been good at taking penalties. So um, I was on the top of the list. I know Pax was there behind wanting to be on the list as well, but um, people respected that if the ball and there was a penalty and I was on the pitch that I was going to take, um, take the next penalty. And so, yeah, when it happened, uh, if you have a look, the ball got thrown straight to me, um, and obviously I was more than happy to go and smash it in. I know we discussed it a couple of times in the weeks leading up to it. I said to you, don't do it away from home somewhere where we can't film it. Um, did that make it a bit more special, maybe doing it at Cheriton Road? Yeah, you know, definitely. In front of a packed remnant stand? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's always nice to score um, at home. I'm not sure what my record is, home or away. I'm sure someone will be able to dig it out about... I think Murrell might put it in the prize. Yeah, <laughs> about where I'll score my goals. Um, but no, it's always, it's always good to score a goal wherever, but... To make sure it's in front of probably more folks than fans is yeah icing on the cake so um i'll ask you about your favorite goals uh hard one to think of um yeah i've seen obviously the videos and looking through but none of them are on it um <laughs> top three don't know what order um lower stop away uh the year yeah me joe taylor and addy were playing up top um and i've hit 30 yard screamer into the top corner um, and that was at a time where we just had a long trip away to Lowestoft it wasn't the best conditions um, I think we needed to bounce back we've had a couple of poor performances um, and that set the tone for that night and we performed really well so that was an important one um, Corinthian casuals away I know a few people have spoken about that one and the overhead kick um, that again there's a photo of somewhere but not video evidence uh, and then my third one not many people remember it, probably Guernsey. Guernsey at home. Um, that one there was video of, but there was it can't video be found. somewhere. Guernsey had it, um, and then I've got rid of it, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a long ball forward, and I think Rookie or Richard Atkins went up with a centre half and they headed it back into midfield, and uh, I hit a, hit a half volley from a long way out, and yeah, I well, used the wind a little bit, I think, to fly in the top corner. What about your highs and, and, and some of your lows? Uh, the first two years, obviously a massive high. Um, a couple of years before that I hadn't been playing up front which typically is where, um, where I've learned my trade if you like uh, for the last or growing up for my first 18 years I was always a striker and a partner with somebody um, so to get back to playing up front in a winning team uh, and winning trophies um, definite high and the lads that we had for those first two years 
was brilliant. We had some great team nights, uh, team nights out, um, and there's a real good buzz around the club for those two years. And it was nice to, to almost when I signed, I sat down with Cugs on one of our, our tick list was we need to get out of this league, um, and I was part of that. And the reason why he brought me in to be able to achieve that was a definite high. Uh, Lowe's, Hendon away, the playoff um, heartbreak if you like, where we just didn't turn up for probably the first half an hour um, and we're 4 deal now, game over very quickly. Um, probably some FA Cup performances, Kings Landley away um, was a real poor one, Northley away was a real poor one, so we've had some poor cup runs where actually you look at it and look at other teams in and around the league and you think actually that should have been us. Um, although this year we've had a good couple of cup runs, so um, they were nice to be able to be part of that. Um, what's look forward then? Uh, what's your what's your aims going forward? Obviously, not, I, don't, I assume you're not giving up playing anytime soon. But like, co you look forward to coaching, management. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a little bit now. Uh, to be honest, um, with Cugs, he likes me, and he, I think he said even this season he wants me to do a bit more work with the forwards um, going forward, which. It's absolutely brilliant. You've seen when Mev's not here that I've taken coaching sessions and done the warm-up thing. So that's my next step. Am I ready to do that yet? No. Um, I feel good. I've returned to pre-season again and feel really good. Uh, so, yeah, continue playing as long as I can. Uh, when it comes to a point where I can't any longer, then obviously, yeah, I, I love non-league football, so I'm sure I'll still be around somewhere in some capacity. But not until then, um, keep myself fit and keep trying to play. Well, thanks for your time, Ian, and uh, hopefully we'll have a lovely day. Yep, no problem.